Hi everybody, we've talked about market and command economies. Now we're going to talk about the role of government in a market economy. As you'll remember, we've discussed how government tends to have a very small role in a market economy, but that role is extremely important. Economists typically say that a small role for government is appropriate in a market economy. There are things that government has to do to keep an economy running fairly. So we're going to look at the things that economists agree on that are important for a market economy. And we're going to go through them one by one. Governments provide public goods and services. That's going to be the first step of the government in a market economy. This is what Adam Smith in his book, The Wealth of Nations, said is the main role of government. And the main role there, he said, was to provide the public good that is the military. A public good is a good that society can't afford or won't create enough of on their own. So think about some public goods and services that you or your neighborhood couldn't afford to produce, but that you use every day. Those are goods and services that individuals or companies are either unable or unlikely to provide for others. And they're goods and services that we need and that help our economy to grow. Businesses on the square benefit from well-maintained roads. Our whole society becomes more productive if we have basic math and reading literacy. And the fire department's important because if your neighbor's house catches fire and nothing's done, it's very possible that your house might catch fire. So these are public goods that are considered extremely important and only the government can provide them efficiently. Other examples include roads and bridges, bus and subway service, water and sewage, particularly in cities. Some of you may live in more rural areas that don't have city water or city sewage, but particularly in cities, that keeps the water system safe. It keeps one person from taking up more water from digging a deeper well, for example. The same with garbage pickup and sanitation. Some of you may live in areas where you take your own garbage, but in a more populated area, if your neighbor never takes their garbage, you're going to notice pretty quickly and it's going to become a health hazard. The military uh, and police and fire. The police don't ask whether you paid your property taxes before they provide service for a burglary. Similarly with fire department. So a public good is something that you get to enjoy whether you've paid your taxes or not. Uh, you can't keep people from enjoying that, but they also are something that are required for the government to provide because individuals are unlikely to make them. Next up is subsidies. Subsidies is when the government gives money to encourage production of a good or service. I'm giving this lecture in 2020 and we're in the middle of a COVID crisis and the government has created a payroll protection act. They're actually subsidizing companies just to keep their workers at work. You can get a loan that can be completely forgiven if you agree to keep hiring all of your employees for a specific amount of time. Other subsidies are things that the government wants you to make. So when a vaccine or other effective treatments are found for COVID, you can expect that the government will subsidize those to make the production cheaper and faster to get our economy running well again. Subsidies also go to other types of medical research. We subsidize a lot of agriculture. There's some criticism about how much. But one of the things that we find is it's very important for us to be able to feed ourselves. And so the government pays to make sure that we have that in case trade is shut down. So a subsidy is when you give someone something to make it cheaper for them to produce something. And the whole point of a subsidy is to get something to be produced more. Flu vaccines to high school students are free. They're not free to produce. They're free to those students because the government pays to get that out. And the reason the government pays for that is a flu outbreak, similar to the COVID outbreak, if left unchecked, could really shut down the economy of an area. There are places where schools have had to close or businesses have had to close because so many Many people were sickened, and a lot of hospital bills come from that. Subsidies help mitigate, meaning make not quite so bad, those problems. Here are some examples of subsidies. Your loans for college or tech school. A home loan is subsidized, so the interest rates on those exist, but they're actually lower because the government subsidizes them. Electricity and natural gas to run those out to rural areas. There are government subsidies given, thanks to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, being upset about the expense of his electricity bill at Warm Springs, 
farmers get agricultural subsidies for growing certain crops. Healthcare gets subsidies. For example, the local hospital in Monroe County is subsidized because it's very small and it's not profitable, but the government thinks it's important to have a nearby ER and hospital in this area. And so it's subsidized and business growth is subsidized. So the Small Business Administration gives loans to companies to help them get started, to help them continue producing during times of crisis like right now. 